The giant new LMS locomotive is undergoing speed trials. It's nearly 75 feet long and weighs over 163 tons. But that's not the only reason why it's outstanding. Actually, it introduces a startling new principle in engine design. Instead of being driven by the old type of steam engine with a piston working up and down in a cylinder, it's driven by a turbine, like a ship's engine. The steam is forced at tremendous pressure against a series of fan blades, causing them to revolve at high speed. Now watch this new giant at speed, and then come aboard and feel the absence of vibration and noise. This engine can develop over 2,000 horsepower, which assures a very high speed. This is the new Admiral's barge to be used by the Commander-in-Chief of the Mediterranean Fleet. Barge is hardly the right word. It looks more like a speedboat, doesn't it? And it is. It's been designed and built by Mr. H. Scott Payne, the speedboat king, and as you can see, it rides on top of the water like a racer. The Commander sits in the forward cockpit and can look right ahead through the windscreen. Aft, there's the engine room with 300 horsepower engines. The steersman is aft too, which allows the commander to use the forward part of the boat. In former designs, the commander has had to look back rather than look ahead. Mr. Scott Payne says that this undoubtedly shows the new spirit in the modern navy. London Pearly Kings arrive for the annual donkey show. Sorry, Pearly Queens as well. They're not going to be outdone by the people who organize the Olympia horse show. They put on their pearly suits and the donkeys get decked out with ribbons and get a good free feed as well. A little Costa girl presents a lucky horseshoe to Lady Newbra, who in turn presents the cup for the best kept moak and the medal for the best pearly suit. The cup is carefully stowed away and then back to the old Kent Road. For years, darts has been the national game of the saloon bar. Here it is in a new mechanized form. The board revolves and in place of the dart you have a ball, which you throw on and score bulls, doubles or trebles in the normal way, or at any rate sometimes. And now the experts show you how. And this is how not to play. The beauty of this game is that you can stand your glass uh, on top of it. Great fire in London's dockland. Over a hundred engines quickly arrive on the scene and very soon it's under control. All the latest firefighting machines are brought into use and the firemen climb to dizzy heights so that they can attack the flames from above. Another example of the magnificent work of our firefighters. But unfortunately there's a tragedy. Two members of the London Fire Brigade lose their lives when a wall of the building collapses. Italy shows off her military forces. Almost at the gates of Rome, the first national mechanized company of the Italian army passes in review before the Italian Secretary of State for War, General Bystrocchi. Here are the light tanks at speed. Now watch one negotiate a difficult bit of country. A contrast is provided by a cavalry display, while General Bystrocchi takes the salute on a high platform. Interesting pictures these in view of the tense situation in Africa. Then come the motorcycles, riding the rough ground to show what they can do. Italy is certainly well equipped, and she'll be a tough proposition if she goes to war. At Nice on the Riviera, the babies have their own Grand Prix motor race. They're lining up for the start. They're off. Each machine is fitted with an engine which develops, uh, shall we say, two leg power. The will to win and good steering, yes, very good steering, is what will carry you furthest at this game. Now watch the finish. Isn't it thrilling? And here's the winner. Champion boxer Max Baer gets beaten twice in quick succession. Once by Braddock in the ring, and once by Cupid through the ring. Here he is with his wife after the ceremony, 
And does he look pleased? Take care, okay? Well, friends, I want to tell you I'm certainly the happiest fellow in the world. I've been called the Playboy, nightclub boy, having a grand time. But I really want to tell you that I'm really serious this time. My second offense, and I'm going to do my best to make it a, what I would call a grand success. And I hope that I make her love me just one half as much as I'm going to love her. God bless you. In Galloway, Scotland, they're holding their annual pageant, and Miss Margaret Ovens, a pupil of Kirkubri Academy, arrives for her coronation as Queen of Galloway. She's crowned by Mrs. McNeil, a well-known Galavidian, and after she's expressed her appreciation of the honor conferred upon her, she and all the other high officials who take part in the ceremony make their way to the Newton Stewart War Memorial, where the new queen lays a wreath. In a magnificently decorated car, the Queen drives at the head of a long procession, and behind her walk famous figures in Galloway history. Hogarth Hill near Dundalk, birthplace of St. Bridget, is the scene of a very impressive pilgrimage of homage and devotion. The ceremony is organized by the St. Vincent de Paul conferences in Dublin, and from Dublin, Belfast, and from many Northern Ireland towns come crowds which are swelled by local contingents from Dundalk, thousands who come to honor Mary of the Gale. At the shrine of the saint, erected not a hundred yards from her birthplace, the Reverend Corcoran of Kilcurley recited the rosary in English and in Irish, and the very Reverend James McCarroll of James Street, Dublin, preached on the importance of this annual Irish holy pilgrimage. <laughs> 